Happy Holidays! On today's program, we're going to have some fun with construction gingerbread, but we're not going to be making gingerbread houses. What I am going to show you on this program is how to make this wreath out of gingerbread people and how to make a gingerbread bowl, which you can use on your table, which smells really nice. You could put a candle in it, you could put cookies in it or decorations, whatever you want to do. This I'm not going to make on today's program, but you can use your own imagination and come up with your own little scene. What I did is I rolled out my gingerbread and I put a bowl and cut out a big giant cookie and baked that and then used it as the base to glue my other cookies on here with some royal icing. So let's get started with our fun day. In my bowl, I've got seven cups of flour. That seems like a lot of flour, but we're gonna make a lot of things with it. So it's a big batch of construction gingerbread. Now to the seven cups, I'm going to add two teaspoons of clove, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and two teaspoons of ginger. Construction gingerbread is really cool. Um, it is edible, but it's not gonna be as good as regular gingerbread. So really it's for constructing things. Now the good thing about it is, is that if you make a centerpiece out of it or something like that and you have little kids over and they break it apart and they start eating it, they're not gonna get sick. They're gonna, it, it is edible and it's fine. It's just, I don't know why they would eat it, but who knows. Okay, there's our seven cups of spicy flour. Put that aside for one minute. I have a cup of uh, sugar, one egg, and I have one cup two, or two sticks of margarine. I'm not using butter, I'm using margarine because we're not gonna eat this, so I'm not gonna spend the money on butter, which is much more expensive. If you don't have margarine, you can use uh, shortening. And then I have one and a half cups plus a little tablespoon or two extra of molasses. Again, you could substitute the molasses uh, with dark corn syrup. So we're gonna take our margarine and put it in the mixer along with the sugar. And now I'm gonna beat this up until it gets nicely blended and it's kind of light and fluffy. And add my egg. to wipe down the sides, plus I need to also add the molasses to this. So I'm going to take it off here because I get a better angle. If I leave it on there, I'm fighting with the top of the mixer. Okay, scrape it down. This stuff is so much fun to play with. Um, you, you really, if you're a very imaginative person, I'm not a, what I would consider an artistic person, so I'm very limited. I'm a copycat. I'll go online and find somebody else's idea of what to do with construction gingerbread. Although I have made gingerbread houses, um, made some with my granddaughter a couple of years ago. Those were fun. Uh, a lot of work, but if you follow a few rules and, and the recipes are good, it could be a lot of fun. So now I'm going to blend this up before we add the flour. Again, scraping it down. Some of it gets stuck on the paddle. I really want to make sure it's blended well. Now I can actually start adding the flour. So I'm going to put my mixer on really low and just start adding the seven cups of flour. Now if you don't have a mixer that can take seven cups of flour, because some people do. Um, not everyone has that, the bigger mixer. You can do this 
half and half. Just cut all your measurements in half and just make two batches. And then put them together. Now, once this is all done and put together, I'm going to wrap it up in plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator because it makes it much easier to work with later if it's cold. And then we'll have some fun with it. it smells like the holidays already. They're not even baked. So my husband and I took our granddaughter and we went to um, the local museum in Springfield, Massachusetts, and they had a contest for gingerbread construction or gingerbread art. Some of that stuff was amazing. I, I imagine it took some people months to make one piece of art. Some of them were like the size of a table. I saw Cinderella's coach and everything. It was beautiful. going to put it in this bowl that I took the flour from and then I'm going to wrap it up with plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator uh, for at least a half an hour or you know you could do this like the night before and leave it in the refrigerator overnight so it won't get bad you might just have to leave it at room temperature for a couple of minutes because if it gets really 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 hard it's kind of hard to roll So nice. Okay, and there we go. I'm gonna wrap it up and into the refrigerator it goes for at least an hour. Here's our gingerbread construction dough, and we're going to make a gingerbread bowl. I'm going to cut my dough in half. This dough will make two bowls, depending on the size. This is a relatively small one. Um, I normally make it on a bigger bowl, but I thought just for this show I was going to make a smaller one. But you can make it any size you want. Get this down here. Get my knife out of here. Now you need to roll it out. Give it a good mix. Now, when I roll this out, I'm going to pick it up, put it over the bowl, and then fit it to the bowl. You might cracks it might get cracks in it. There's just, that's the nature of the beast. And if we do, just treat it like Play-Doh. Pinch and pinch and pinch and just till you get it nice and smooth or as smooth as you possibly can. Okay. And how thick do you want it? Well, actually the thicker the better. It'll take a little bit more time to bake, but you'll get more stability out of it. Because this is not gonna have any royal icing or anything on it, unless you choose to at the end. And you'll see what I mean. Just see where we are. Just a little bit more, I think. Now, we need to spray the bowl because what's going to happen is afterwards, when it comes out of the oven, you're going to turn it upside down, pull this back, remove the bowl, and then peel out the uh, aluminum foil. And you don't want it to stick. And you do want to do it on foil. You don't want to do it directly on a um, bowl. You'll see it's got crinkles on it. It's the nature of the beast. Use uh, cheap foil. Don't use the heavy duty stuff because it's much harder to get the creases out of it uh, with the heavier duty one. So we're just 
spray it all over. And now, say a little prayer. Like I said, treat it like, like you would Play-Doh. See how already it's starting to pull away from the weight of itself. It's okay. Don't get upset. And I'm molding it towards the bottom. I'm just trying to fit it to that bowl. And if you have a few cracks in it, who cares? It's not like you're going to fill this up with liquid. There's lots of things you can fill it up with when it's done. You could fill it up with cookies. You can fill it up with colored ornaments. You know, nice pretty ornaments. You could put a candle in it. Put this aside because I can reuse that. I'm not doing a very good job in cutting, but you can take more time when you're doing it. Now, that looks okay. Let's put a little bit of a decoration on it. I've got a little gingerbread cookie guy, and I'm gonna make little peak holes. And I'm gonna go not too close to the edge. And just cut that out. Do one on the opposite side. One on this side. I think I'm only going to do four. You can do more. You can do it in between each of those two. But I think you'll get more stability out of the bowl if you don't make too many holes in it. This is going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Uh, maybe a little bit longer. Just keep checking it after that time just to make sure it's not burning or anything like that. I'm going to put this on a cookie sheet and into my oven. And um, after this goes in the oven, I'll show you what else you can do with this dough. All right, our bowl is in the oven. And now I've got this much dough left over and I'm going to just use half of it at a time because I find it easier to roll out. And what I'm going to do is make the components from the wreath that you saw. Um, if you want to make that. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm not going to do the centerpiece. That takes a long time because of the royal icing. But I'll explain it to you later. So anyways, what we need now is in order to make that wreath, we need about 20, maybe 24 um, gingerbread men. Let me talk to you about what we're going to put them on. This is just a plain piece of cardboard. I think this is about 11 or 12 inches diameter that I put a bowl on and I cut it out with an X-Acto knife and then I did the same thing with the center to form a, a wreath frame, if you will. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the, all of the cookies along the side of this. And I'll show you how to, we're going to do that later on. But right now, we're going to make our men. You could do this with women if you wanted. Or you could do both. That would be cool. Um, and you can make it one guy, one girl, one guy, one girl. That would be kind of fun. But I also need some little ones. Now I'm going to make the little ones out of gingerbread. By the little ones I mean when I have this frame I'm going to put the cookie down and it's going to be flat. I want the next cookie to be raised up so I'm going to put a small one there and then put that one on top. It won't be that thick and I'll keep going up down up down up down. I'll show you in a while. You'll see what I mean. So here we go. So like I said, we need about 20 of these, but I'll make a few extra for the sake of breakage and possible eating by someone. 
these will get decorated as you saw in the wreath. Up to you how you want to decorate it. I decorated it all in white. I happen to like the wreath in just the ginger color and then the white accent. You can do anything you want with your colors. I've got six. I've got a few more to go. So if I need 20 to 24, I'm making 24 just so that I have enough. I don't think I need that many for that wreath, but I'll make that many just for the sake of having it on hand. So you need half of that in the little ones. If you don't, like I said, if you don't have a gingerbread cutter, you can make little round ones. You must have a little round cutter, something that you could cut the little ones from. So here's some little ones. And what I will do is I will just keep rolling this and the rest of the dough and make until I get enough of them. And then these will go in that 350 degree oven for about, oh, 15 minutes. A little less because it's, it's not as big. So I will just keep rolling and cutting. So our first pan of gingerbread, construction gingerbread cookies are out of the oven along with the bowl. Now, I think when I was giving you the recipe before, I might have said that I used molasses. I didn't, I used dark corn syrup. I used, normally I use molasses, but I ran out of it, so I used dark corn syrup. And this is the difference, because I made some the other day. It's in color, so this is with molasses, this is with dark corn syrup. You can see the, the vast difference in color. Doesn't mean you can't use these, they're still beautiful. You can use these in your wreath, or you can just use molasses, which I should have. Same thing with the bowl. Now the bowl, very delicate. This is the hard part. But it's really, if you sprayed your bowl well, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. I can feel it coming out. Oh, I forgot, I'm supposed to do this. Fold out stuff now. Your bowl comes out really easy. And now all you do is peel out the foil. And now you have a bowl. Now, my <laughs> gingerbread didn't come out looking so well, but you know what? It looks homemade and it's gonna be beautiful on your table. And what can you do with this? Well, I think I mentioned before, you can fill it with cookies, you can fill it with colored Christmas ornaments, you can put greens in here, or you can put a nice big, one of those big fat candles in here, and it just looks good, and it's gonna smell wonderful on your table. So that's the gingerbread bowl. These um, need to be iced. And, and to, to make the wreath, to decorate them. These are too warm, I can't. So I'm gonna use the ones I made the other day. And what I made were these. And you can see the difference in color. These were made with molasses and these were made with the dark corn syrup. Doesn't matter whichever way you wanna go. You can still make a beautiful wreath out of both of them or you could actually do two tones and do both of them. I'm going to use these for this because once you decorate them with royal icing, you gotta let these sit for a couple of hours to let that royal icing really, really set. Otherwise, it's gonna crack on you and come off. So, royal icing, um, I'm not gonna make it right now. The, the uh, recipe is on the website. It's fairly easy to make. And then uh, you can make your own and then decorate your gingerbread people like you want. So now, give me a couple of minutes. I'm gonna go get my wreath frame and I'm gonna show you how I put together the wreath. So here's the cardboard ring I showed you earlier. It's gonna be my base. Just pull it off an old cardboard box. Now, I'm going to use a glue gun and glue these on because I'm not planning on eating these. You could also stick these on with royal icing. Royal icing gets really hard, so it would be um, easy to do. But I don't know if it's as hard as using a glue gun. So what I'm going to do is put some glue on here. Then I'm gonna 
put it down so his feet are a little bit below this end and his head is over the side. Then next to it, remember how I told you we want one up, one down. Here's one of the small, plain, undecorated little gingerbread guys. And you could, like I said, you could use um, a circle too. It doesn't really matter. Put him down and then grab another guy. Whoops, his eyeball fell out. Okay. And now, kind of put him over. I'm gonna move him down a little bit. And you just overlap him a little bit, just so they look like, almost like they're holding hands. Now I've got some of these red candies also, and you're probably wondering why I have those. Well, because if you have areas in here that you can see the cardboard and you don't want to see the cardboard, you can stick a little berry in there. It just adds that little bit of color. So here we go. There's a berry there. There's a berry there. And I'm just going to keep going around and around and around until we have a wreath. That looks like our original one. And I added a bow. And there you go with, here's how that will look. Fairly inexpensive to make. You can make a bunch of these and give them away as gifts. It's real cheap if you've got some cardboard lying around. So happy holidays. Hope you like it.